Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop, Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from Blue Sky, San Diego, as usual. And today I'm joined by Mark Willis, who is up in Chicago. Blue Sky's there, Mark? Today, uh, yes, windy, as usual for Chicago, but uh, Blue Sky's. Exactly. So um, Mark is a certified financial planner and a two-time number one best-selling author and the owner of Lake Growth Financial Services, a financial firm in Chicago, Illinois. And what we wanted to talk about today is probably a subject that's dear to a lot of your hearts right now, particularly as we're in this economic uncertainty and we're in this continuing pandemic crisis. Probably a lot of you have logged on and looked at your 401ks for the first time in maybe many months because things were going well and you were like, oh, it's going up, stock market's going up, I'm sure my 401k is doing great. And now you're looking at it and you're going, oops, where did that 15, 20% <laughs> go that it's down now? So Mark has some, has some interesting insights on uh, tax deferred retirement accounts, 401ks, IRAs, all of that thing, all of that. So maybe we start off, um, Mark, what is it about 401ks and other tax deferred uh, retirement accounts that maybe people don't consider when they make their, that their sole or their primary investment choice? Well, you're exactly right. Uh, it is the primary and default option for millions, tens of millions of Americans. And, you know, it wasn't always the case. You know, it wasn't like the 401k was uh, created on the sixth day or something. In fact, mm -hmm. John, uh, the 401k is not even old enough to retire yet. That's how <laughs> young it is. Uh, so it's a grand experiment on a national scale. When we as a nation moved from pensions, which is a guaranteed income, mm -hmm. over to uh, 401ks, which have no guarantees, uh, and there is no value guarantee in the 401k. As you mentioned, yeah, your 401k could just as easily be a 201k if the market turns the wrong direction. And right. unfortunately, as a certified financial planner, I've seen it. I've seen folks who are 62, 64, 67 years old, who all of a sudden woke up in the middle of this pandemic and thought they were going to retire in May, uh, back in Valentine's Day when, when they were looking at their projections. Yeah. And now they're stuck. They're, not only are they laid off, but their retirement money is vaporized too. It's, it's a true, true uh, national calamity. We were in a crisis before this pandemic started. We're certainly there now. Yeah, no, absolutely. But even, even when there's not, even, so, so something as calamitous as, as this obviously has an outsized impact, but let's face it. I mean, there are constant like ebbs and flows in, in the stock market. And let's face it. I mean, we've had recently, I mean, we had 9-11, we had the financial crash, we had this, before that we had the dot-com implosion. So it seems to be that we have these, uh, we have these occurrences on a regularly, on a fairly regular basis, but yet we still all kind of trust that it'll all come back up again. Right. So when everything time things go down, you think it's okay. If I wait a couple of months, they'll go up. Yeah, you bet. The tr it takes a lot more to go up uh, in a, with, to recover from what you lost. In other words, mm -hmm. if, you, if, if I was to say you lost 10% and then got 10% back, most, m most of the guys on the street, guys and gals on the street would think, hey, I lost 10%, I got 10%. I should be back to even. Right. Unfortunately, math says otherwise. If you lose 10%, you need 11% to get back to where you started. And it's even worse, when we lost 30% earlier this year, it will take us 43% to break even. And you'll have to do it when the, within the same time period, we lost 30% of the market's value in a month. In a month. We haven't seen yeah. that kind of volatility since October of 1929. And so John, to get back to where we started, we'd need to break 43% growth in under a month, which we're already past mm -hmm. that now, uh, now that we're into May. So unfortunately, the time value of money is not on our side and compounding, breaking compound growth is the worst thing we can do to our money because, uh, again, it takes more effort to lift our sales once we've, we've broken the streak, so to speak. Uh, yeah, so. and, and, and like you were saying, then it's obviously, I mean, our hearts go out, especially to those people who are imminently retiring or whatever, who've seen their whole worlds turned upside down. 
So when you when you talk to people, I mean, even at this stage now when we're in crisis, like, I mean, if I came to you and I said, oh, you know, my 401k is down by X amount, should I just wait it out, Mark, or whatever? What advice would you give me? Or are there alternative investment strategies I should be looking at? Well, yeah, there's, it's hard to, to give blanket advice to everyone, sure. but I will say this, uh, you know, there, there is more out there than just your 401k. It's, there are over 450 financial vehicles, products out there. Uh, and I certainly don't know everyone's particulars here, but <laughs> think of it this way. You know, if, if, if you were being, um, let's, let's use the metaphor of an abusive relationship for a moment. And I agree with you, John. I think our hearts, my concern, my prayers go out to anyone who's been negatively impacted both on a physical level and a financial level. But think about it this, this way. The stock market has done this to us now three times in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that we could be in, a, in an abusive relationship with the stock market. You know, uh, we say things like, um, it'll always come back. Uh, you know, uh, don't look at it when it's hurting you. Uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, things like this, like, um, you know, it's your fault you're in this position. I mean, those are yeah. words that it's even hard for me to say out of my mouth, right? But this is mm -hmm. the truth. Wall Street has typically and traditionally and consecutively now uh, brought us to our knees right when we could least afford it. And we've never been this yeah. old before and we can least afford this crisis the closer you get to retirement. You know, everyone listening to this, there are other options out there that provide the things that the 401k does not. Things like a predictable income stream guaranteed for the rest of your life. That is a possible strategy that could be at least a basis of your financial plan. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's actually... Uh, one of the strategies we work on is something called the income maximization strategy, John. And yes. what it allows folks to do is to transfer a, do a direct rollover or a transfer from IRA to IRA or 401k, uh, doing a direct tax deferred rollover to a product that gives folks guaranteed income for the rest of their life. You know, if you love the idea of a pension, but your employer mm -hmm. doesn't offer it, or if you as a solopreneur, are not able yeah. to give yourself a pension, you can sure. do that. You know, if you, if you have funds and would like to protect that money from ever seeing another downturn in the market, uh, these are sort of products and strategies that have been around uh, for a very long time. In fact, I'll, do, uh, I'll tell you this, John, very quickly. I was in a um, museum here in Chicago uh, mm -hmm. and they do a, a walkthrough of ancient Egypt, ancient Mesopotamia, stuff from like 2,000, right. 3,000 years ago. One of the items in that hall was an annuity contract from over 2,000 years ago. Wow. So wow. what are annuities? They are income streams mm -hmm. that you do not outlive. It's like a personal pension to yourself. And mm -hmm. you can do that with your IRAs, your 401ks. You can move some of your money into something that gives you predictable and guaranteed income that you cannot outlive. That's something very simple. You know, it's not all we do through our firm here, John, but it is something yeah. possible. And maybe for folks that have variable income today, Maybe there's some peace of mind to know that you could have at least some of your income, you know, as a rock solid guarantee for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I think you're probably uh, nowadays, you're probably having a lot of people who are reconsidering what they thought is all, uh, you know, pensions and those. It's all, it's all like, you know, 19th century, that whole idea. And now yeah. they're realizing, you know, the one thing, as you said, the one thing about pensions is they were predictable. Um, and what you're talking about here is I think there's a lot of people would swap volatility for predictability right now. At least for a portion, you know, mm -hmm. go ahead and have fun. Sure. And especially with many of your audience, if you're like me, we love the thrill of the chase. We love growing yeah. uh, our opportunities. But the money I cannot afford to lose, that would be my grocery, gas, and enjoyment money in my golden years. Let's put it somewhere where I know it's going to be there. I shouldn't leverage my future, you know, my future self for today's risk. I can take necessary risks, and that's a lot of fun. It's when I start taking unnecessary risks yeah. that we're in trouble. You know, that's when I'm jumping out of airplanes. Uh, <laughs> it's more fun to take yeah. a necessary risk to grow my business, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think obviously, because as you know, I mean, a lot of people do, you know, put in their 401ks or whatever and just put, put it in as aggressive and then just forget about it. And right. never, mm -hmm. cha never change their, um, their, their, their profile throughout the whole thing. So it's always aggressive. So it's great when, it's, when aggression works. It's not so good when a, it gets knocked on its behind. Oh, yeah. Well, and I'll give you uh, some, some, another piece here. You know, if you can put some of your money in a very risk-free asset, 
again, mm-hmm. like annuities, like some other protect, yeah. uh, protected assets. That's not the, again, that's not the be all end all, but that's one of the sure. options. Real estate might be another. But if you put some of your money into predictable, you can actually take more risk on a mathematical basis. Right. You can take more risk and have more fun, be more aggressive with the money you want to put into speculative instruments. Uh, it can be, a, we call that the barbell strategy, where you give folks the ability on one side to have safety and security, and on the other side to be, you know, as, as speculative as you want to be. Yeah, no, that, that that makes complete sense. So you just touched on there for a moment, uh, a moment ago about real estate. Um, is this, uh, in your opinion, if if you have the if you have the capacity to do it, is this a good time to get into real estate? I think we, you know, I don't have a magic crystal ball or anything, John. Sure. But uh, you know, I'm not going to hold say, you to it. Though. All right. <laughs> well, you know, if I were if I were throwing darts, I'd say for investment deals. Now, personal residence might be a different story. If you need to move, sure. go ahead. But you know, yeah. for your investments. Uh, I'd hold off. I'd hold off at least mm-hmm. another six months. I'd wait until you start hearing about foreclosures. I'd wait until you start right. hearing about banks uh, purchasing properties or buying back, getting back into the real estate world. That's when you'll find the real deal. Wait at least six, maybe 24 months um, before the real opportunity comes in. Uh, I am seeing a lot of people jumping in at first, first sight of blood, but I would say take a moment, take a breath, wait like Warren Buffett has. He hasn't bought anything yet. And uh, I right. think that's a, a good sign that the, the patient will be rewarded. Yeah. And what about things like assets like gold? Um, because, I mean, people often feel like, oh, I wish I'd have got into gold five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago, whatever. And they always feel like it's too late to get into. Is that, an, is that another asset that's worth considering? Yeah, gold, precious metals. You know, there are, um, you know, I can see both sides of the coin. Forgive the pun mm-hmm. there, John. Sure. Uh, but I do see the, the the upside of gold. It looks very good. Silver actually looks even better right now. Again, I don't have any particular investment advice, mm-hmm. but I do see some real potential for uh, the precious metals to go up, especially as we're printing money uh, hand over fist uh, on, on the other side of the nation from San Diego there. Uh, the Federal Reserve seems to have that printing press running hot right now. And uh, keeping, keeping everyone's uh, pockets lined, at least until the election, uh, with mm-hmm. um, cash flow. So, you know, I would say the best thing you can do is decide for yourself how much, uh, what do I want my money to do for me? More right. important than gold or real estate or mm-hmm. annuities, ask yourself what characteristics do I want my money to have? And there are strategies out there that are more aligned to your, your needs than others. I always say, you know, if I could choose between Tiger Woods golf clubs or Tiger Woods golf swing, Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'd take a swing. I don't care what the club For is. Sure. You know, if I know exactly. a strategy, if I have a concept, if I have a paradigm to get myself down the fairway of my life, then I'll pick any financial vehicle af- out of my bag of clubs once I've got my swing down. And that's where I think a competent advisor, uh, I'll humbly offer my services to folks if you'd like, but I'd say a competent advisor and be your caddy and be your guide uh, in the midst of pretty turbulent times right now. Because mm-hmm. it's it's a good point that you just made there about um, what you want, you know, what you want from your investment, what you want from your financial future. I don't think that's a question that enough people ask themselves. I mean, I could even say guilty myself sometimes of like, you know, not really thinking that through to to uh, well, me too. to a, yeah. a, a, a proper degree. So, what would your advice be to people right now? Is to, I mean, how, how can they just even start the process of of figuring out what they want from their financial future? You know, that's a thought exercise, and I'm so glad you asked. Mm-hmm. I do think that that's a really important and helpful question to ask. You know, imagine your Pope of money for the day, <laughs> and nice. you can wave your magic wand and create a brand new unicorn financial instrument, whatever that might look like. Just sort of sit down and say, well, what kind of characteristics, what kind of attributes would I want my money to do for me? Uh, I'll give you a few kind of primers for folks if you're listening. Uh, do you want easy access to cash or do you want it locked up, Mm -hmm. you know, for 40 years? Do you want some sort of principled, guaranteed, competitive rate of return that has guarantees built in or do you want no guarantees? Do you want your money to be taxed on the seed today or Mm -hmm. on the harvest in the future? That's a good question to really think through. Again, the 401k Mm -hmm. is taxed on the harvest when right. taxes are, I don't know about you, John, but probably taxes are going up over our lifetime. Probably. Uh, <laughs> uh, so demand to deficit, like sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of reasons for most economists 
uh, to agree that taxes are very likely going higher. Even if they're just 1% higher, it is mathematically better to pay your tax on the seed than to mm -hmm. wait and pay your taxes in the future. Where, where else do we put off? I'll give you an example. Like, let, let's say we needed a loan from a bank. And you go to the bank and the bank says, hey, you know, um, here's some money. Don't worry about the interest. Uh, we'll vote on what your interest rate is 30 years from now when it's time to collect. Yeah. Would I take that deal? No way. No. <laughs> and yet that's every 401k in America right now. Uh, so, you know, they're yeah. going to vote on how much of that 401k they own. Yeah. And it's interesting because obviously that's the that's the way it's sold and that's the attraction of it is look oh look it's tax deferred it's fantastic and yeah, then you're yeah. looking at all this money but it's and the reality is yeah of course it's um it comes it comes to harvest time eventually that's right yeah i mean if i was to defer a root canal is that a good idea <laughs> i'm not sure yeah. that word defer is <laughs> Uh, but again, most people haven't stopped. I myself, uh, before mm -hmm. I was forced to uh, going through the CFP, it was an eye-opening experience to get this de designation because you're really forced to learn a lot of vocabulary words that most of us um, just, we don't typically, we're not taught this in school, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, yeah asking and, yourself those questions, I think is helpful. And I think that is a, that is a, that's a great point though that you just made there. And I do think it's a huge flaw in the education system is, you know, financial literacy isn't taught um, any of these things and people just, uh, you know, go out and figure it out for themselves, some successfully, some not successfully. And thankfully there are people like yourself around to help, uh, help most of us through this, through this issue. So what is one, uh, maybe one last piece of advice you would give to people right now, maybe people who are, um, a couple of years away from retirement or, you know, I'm really starting to panic. Yeah. Well, you know, it can be a um, very uh, anxiety ridden conversation. In fact, we go through quite a few tissue boxes in our offices here, uh, here because it is a anxiety ridden discussion for some Americans. Uh, so mm -hmm. I would say if you're getting close, take it one day at a time. And I'd like to challenge you to look at your existing burn rate. Uh, and right now we're in the midst of a, um, a global health crisis, but I'd like to say you could be financially immune if you can lower your temperature on your expenses. So lower that burn rate. The, you know, if you're feeling like you're burning up, you know, you've got a fever and you got to lower mm -hmm. your temperature. Similarly, if you lower your burn rate on your cash, your, how many Netflix subscriptions do we really need, right? Uh, yeah. That sort of thing. So if you can cut those expenses right now, start negotiating with every bill you have, uh, you'll, you'll find that these moments in uh, these financial crises that we go through can be amazing opportunities for negotiation, John. And I would say, you know, if you can challenge yourself to once every three months, look at how much you're saving and increase it by just 1% per quarter, just 1%. If you can cut an expense and add a little bit more to saving, just 1% of additional volume of saving, you know, the average American saves 5%, John. So if we go from 5 to 9% of savings, mm -hmm. the problem of this uh, crisis would be solved uh, over, right. over just one year. And do that a few times, a few years in, and, and you'll be amazed at what you can do, even if you're just a few years out from retirement. Better if you're 22 years old, but no matter yes. what your age, packing away is a good idea. Yeah, that's great advice. Okay, all of Mark's information is going to be available in his contributor bio below. But before we go, Mark, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do and how they can find out more. Yeah, thanks. We have a full financial firm that works virtually. I don't have to uh, meet you in person so we can be socially distant and still be friends at the same time. Uh, and I'd love to be honored to uh, work with anyone who's on the hunt for a financially sane and stable financial future. Check us out at notyouraveragefinancialpodcast.com, uh, or you can just find our podcast wherever you heard this show. Uh, and we'd be honored to have a 15-minute chat to maybe answer some of those questions that I listed just now of what your perfect financial instrument is, whatever it might be. Perfect. Listen, this has been great, Mark. It's been highly informative and very timely as well. My name is John Golden, Says Pop Online, Says Magazine, and Pipeline to CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.